What's up guys, in this video we're going to show false ovulations versus true ovulations. Now if you look right there where I was showing with my index finger, you can see what I would call a false ovulation. It's a bright red dot that often is inside of all leopard geckos if you look there closely enough from time to time. Now this is the other way that you could check for ovulations. I don't prefer this way, but sometimes I will use it especially if the girl is wiggling around a lot or giving me a hard time to bend her back. Sometimes you really need to bend their backs pretty far to see those deep ovulations. I know this could look awkward to the gecko, but I've never had a gecko get injured or show signs of stress or pain or anything like that, and we've done this thousands of times. All right, we're gonna check out this next black knight here. Very cool looking black knight, actually. If you look at that tail, it kind of has like this white dripping off the tail, and it just has a really nice, like golden look with the blacks and the whites so pretty cool gecko but we are going to need to look for ovulations and so with this girl she's a little smaller than average but that is because she is a black knight and sometimes black knights will be a little smaller than average so we're gonna look at to see if she has ovulations here and she too is showing the red dot which you could probably see in her stomach right there but that is not what i would consider a ready to go ovulation if that is an ovulation and i would need to clear that with a medical reference to prove that that's an ovulation but if that is an ovulation it's what i call a false ovulation or a not ready ovulation and what that means is that the girl is just not ready to breed if you pair her in that condition nine times out of 10 or even 10 times out of 10 for me, I've never had a girl breed successfully under those terms. And so because of that, I don't breed them when they have just that one red dot. Ovulations are bright pink dots and we're gonna show that throughout the rest of this video clearly to show you what the difference is between a false ovulation and a true ovulation. Now here is what I actually call an in-between ovulation. It's not quite what you want to see in an ovulation, but you could clearly see that bright pink dot. And this is also where you start to see the red dot that I was talking about that's a false ovulation. So I would need to talk to a vet or a medical expert on the biology of reptiles. Maybe what we are seeing is like a pre-ovulation, but I can tell you when geckos are in this state with the ovulation looking like that, it's not good. A lot of times they are very angry and very aggressive to the males. So you do not want to pair them when they're like that. Or if you do try to pair them, you want to keep an eye out to make sure that no fighting happens. Now let's take a look at a tangerine leopard gecko because black knights can actually be a little tough to see ovulations because of how dark their belly is. Here you can clearly see two dots in the stomach of the girl. And if the gecko wiggles around a little bit, use a slippery surface like I'm using here and sometimes you will need to bend their backs a little bit further to get those ovulations to pop out. And so what we're looking at here is actually two ovulations in the state that I would pair this girl. One of them is in the middle of the stomach, kind of like we looked at in the last clip, and I don't really like that. But in this clip, you could actually see like a bright, big, pinkish circle that has white in the middle. That's really what you want to look for. Now the location of an ovulation is extremely important. At the beginning of this video, we saw ovulations that started in the middle of the stomach of the gecko. That is not where you want an ovulation. Although that might be an ovulation, what you want is on the two sides of the leopard gecko's stomach. And usually, in the best case, they are staggered. One will be a little bit higher up than the other one. They will be diagonal and not in the middle of the gecko. Sometimes you will only see one clear ovulation. Like in this gecko, you could see one big ovulation towards her chest almost, which sometimes happens. So a lot of people think the fatty bodies on a leopard gecko are ovulations or eggs down near where the butthole is. But no, look at that bright pink circle there with the white circle in the middle. That is what you want to look for. And those are usually staggered closer to like the rib cage, one higher up, one lower, and sometimes they flip uh, sides, you know, depending on every cycle of the girl. And that's what you want to look for for an ovulation, about a centimeter in length. 
Now, if I didn't make this clear earlier, you do want to make sure that the ovulations are staggered on both sides of the stomach. So if you basically cut the stomach down the middle, what you'll have is ovulations on both sides. Now, sometimes you will get ovulations like this that are very messy and you'll see like two, three, four ovulations and this can definitely be so. Sometimes when a leopard gecko is actually growing eggs in her stomach, you'll see two eggs growing in the stomach and two new ovulations coming in. So sometimes on rare occasions, the gecko will drop four ovulations at once and that's what this will look like. Now, if you guys have not seen my egg versus ovulation versus growing egg video, definitely take a look at that. There's a lot of cool stuff in there and I'll leave a link to that here in this video in the top right. Other than that, if you guys have any questions on anything, feel free to let me know. I wanted to try to give a little bit more of an in-detail video of what I look for every breeding season and every week while we're cleaning females throughout the year to see if they are ovulating. Females can ovulate throughout the year, so you really have to be on guard. Most females will ovulate December through April, meaning that they're, they're gonna start and then they're gonna finish three or four months later. But I have girls that go in the middle of summer that start like right now, and some girls that even start in October, November, December area. So you really just have to keep an eye on the leopard geckos, know your collection, and whenever a girl starts to go, keep an eye on her in the future, because that's most likely when she's gonna go again in, in the future the next year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have a comment or question below, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a geeky gecko great day. Peace.